those rings, which is which is good, but it's only part of the problem. On our page uh, here, which is just a free Facebook page, it's open. We'd love for you to join. It's called Lots of for a fish to perceive as a uh, difference between food and plastic bits of plastic that are floating either in freshwater environments or in the open ocean. And thus, small bits of plastic are being consumed by fish. And then, of course, not only does that affect the fish's health, but uh, if we're consumers of those fish, we are also... Uh, ingesting potentially some of the petroleum based products that go into making plastics as well which obviously is not good for either the fish or ourselves um, a lot of research is going to be posted on the Facebook page so I'm just hitting the high points right now also we're working behind the scenes on developing our blog with further links and connections that we hope to have if this project gets launched ever more resources for people to understand how they can change their use of plastics on a daily basis so I've just collected things that I've used daily I'm noticing more and more that the importance of planning ahead is really important so Having a carrying bag with me at the grocery store. Obviously, the grocery stores are getting on board with this, and there's much, much more availability at the checkout stand, even when you can buy a bag, uh, a reusable bag for a dollar, which is just great that they're supporting these changes. So, I'm just going to kind of go through what I've noticed about my own use. Um, especially as the summer weather got hotter and more humid, I found myself stopping at quick stops and just grabbing a quick soda or uh, other bottled water. It's so cheap, isn't it? At, you know, wherever you go, you can get a case of like 24 bottled waters for um, a very cheap price, like under $5. And there's... Again, research we'll be talking about later about how this water is not any cleaner than what comes out of your tap. So unless it's gone through a reverse osmosis process or some sort of distilling process, all of these waters are potentially about the same as what you would receive through your tap. So don't be misled by that. So these, again, are just some examples of just everyday items that get used that have plastics. Some of these are what they call single-use items. Some may be um, 
usable until the ingredients in the container has been used and then it gets tossed in the recycling bucket. There's a great question about how does something that is supposed to be recycled end up in our waterways or in the open ocean. And um, again, that's a, a quite a good discussion, uh, which we'll, we'll talk about that as well on our blog. But some of that just has to do with the difficulties with sorting out some of the plastics. Uh, China has complained that a lot of the plastics that come from the United States are mixed with Oh, you may not even know that, but anyway, a lot of things that are supposed to be recycled end up on big cargo containers shipped across the ocean and used to be sent to China, but China now is starting to refuse a lot of those because the waste that comes from the U.S. is mixed with paper goods and other products that are non-recyclable. So... I wanted to show this, for instance, that I did a good thing of getting organic sunflower seeds, which is really great. And so many products, however, whether it's at Trader Joe's or Whole Foods or our normal grocery stores or food co-ops or anywhere are packaged in these uh, little plastic containers, some of which are recyclable and some are not. Not to mention restaurant containers, which are um, reusable to a point, but then it's like how many of these can you actually store in your kitchen, right? Without going totally stark raving mad. And not all of these containers are recyclable. And so they just end up in the landfill. And um, if, if they make it that far, um, also there's just the use of kitchen, you know, like garbage bags. So all of us use garbage bags. So garbage goes, even our recyclables, you know, uh, will go into a garbage bag that breaks down into little bits of plastic that end up in our waterways, bread wrappers, again, maybe doing a good thing, eating, you know, Trader Joe's, gluten-free, da-da-da. You can see I tried to reuse that as bag within a bag. But uh, the ability for the environment to break that down into anything that's organic and sustainable, pretty much impossible. Um, same with things that are for our pets. The pet industry is huge in... Uh, creating smaller packages for special treats for our pets, toys. This, um, you know, one of these dual action flea collars made out of plastic also has pesticides in it. And then there's just hardware packaging. I mean, it just goes on and on and on, right? And again, there are people who are working on solutions that are either hemp-based um, containers or reusing other materials in order to substitute for plastics. But the idea with our campaign is to create an app, which, again, John, John Craig Freeman is a visual artist. So this is an augmented reality app that is much like uh, Pokemon Go that's geolocated to your phone. It's very easy to use. And our hope and our inspiration is that we can bring more and more awareness to those people and companies who are trying to find long-term solutions for our plastic use and using art as a model for bringing that message out to the average person who we all use our cell phones every day. So this is something that would be available on our phones and you can click on our Indiegogo campaign to find out more about that. And, um, I'll be posting a video of 
John Craig Freeman talking more about the work that he does do. Um, so lots of links, lots of information. What we would like from you is support to get this project off the ground. And so what he specifically needs is uh, some equipment to be able to photograph and condense um, high quality images to allow the, uh, the knitting together of the concept that he has for the augmented reality app that will be downloadable. And then we will, as a team, offer to come and visit with you and your group, if you'd like, uh, to talk about how to use that. We also will have exhibits that are virtual exhibits. Uh, if you have fundraisers yourself that you would like to engage in, we can assist with that. And um, we're, what we're trying to do is broaden the message using technology at its highest level, which um, no doubt is not my strength. So I'm relying on other people to help with that. And that's why we're working as a team. Um, please do visit our Indiegogo campaign. We have some funders from behind the scenes who have donated $250, $75. There's several other people who have donated $25. We have some really cool gifts like uh, Saint, well, I'll, I'll post them, but they're like Google glasses. Of course, a standard tote bag. We'll have a custom design, a whale adoption kit from the Ocean Alliance. And then an opportunity to have um, this exhibit via augmented reality available and downloadable to your device um, at no cost. So for your donation in exchange for your donation. Um, join us. There's a lot of voices out there that want to be heard on these issues. Again, just the plastic bag issue is the tip of the iceberg. And um, we know locally, there's a lot of groups that are working towards that. We'd like to tie in with those groups and hear their stories and what's been successful for them. Uh, so if you're interested, you can contact me through Facebook. You can, you know, personal message me. Or if you'd like to, you can also send an email to art tech innovation 01 and uh, at gmail.com. We look forward to hearing from you and do join our group Flotsam and Jetsam. There's interesting articles posted almost every day. Lots more to learn. Thanks for listening, guys. Thank you. More soon. <laughs>